single-term insight. <clears throat> Don't neglect the signs. Make them work for you. We got 3x times a positive 8x squared. I'm going to write that out. 3x times 8x squared. I've just done the first set of terms. Next, I have a 3x times a, I consider those terms with a sign in front of them. That's why when we talk about this, if I said, oh, how many terms do I have? You'd all tell me three, right? I'd say, what's the first term? You'd say 8x squared. I'd say, what's the second term? And you'd say negative x, wouldn't you? That's because the sign goes with that term because you could write it as plus a negative. That's how we let those signs work for us. So we say, okay, what's 3x times negative x? 3x times negative x. Is it positive or negative? Negative. negative. So I'm going to write a minus. That's where that sign goes. It takes care of itself. And then I'm going to write 3x times x. Not negative x because I just used that over here. I don't need it twice. I've already taken care of it. Do you see why we have a minus here and no negative there? Not, not your head if you do. Yeah. I didn't see a whole lot of head nods. It, it, it's yes, do yes. Because these are big things we're talking about. If it's no, go no. That's okay. Yes, no. Okay. And lastly, are we going to have a plus or minus at the end? Plus. Good. We have a positive times a positive. I'm going to write 3x times 11. So far, so good? Yeah. Yes, sir. Keep on working on it. We'll get 24x to the third. 3x squared, 33x, and a show of hands on how many people made it that far. Good for you, that's fantastic, it's really good. Now here's the one thing I'm going to change. I want you to go back and, and either rewrite this problem, which is what you're going to do. I'm just going to erase this, I want you to see the difference here. That's what we got on my original problem. I want you to see what happens, because this is important for you. This is what's going to be on your test. What would happen if I put a negative there? Would it change this stuff? Yeah. Would it change the first term, or the second term, or the third term, or two of them, or one of them? What's it going to change? All of them. All of them. Change every single one. Let's look at what happens here. Watch exactly what we do. We'd still circle that number with the sign. If I multiply it, check it out now. I've got a negative times a positive. I'd write negative 3x times 8x squared. Are you okay on that one? Yeah. But watch what happens next. This is the important ones are the next ones. I've got a negative times a negative. Watch carefully. I've got a negative times a negative. What's that make? Positive. So I'm going to write a what? Plus. A plus. Pay close attention. If I have a plus, though, I'm going to have 3x times x. Well, now, wait a second, Mr. Leonard. This is what you might be asking. Why don't these have negatives anymore? Explain that to me. Why don't they have negatives? It's negative and a negative. So we already dealt with it? Yes. We already dealt with it. Yeah. So we're going to deal with those signs, let them work for us, let them take care of themselves, and then write the, the, the terms themselves being multiplied. Are you guys all right with that? Yeah. Otherwise, you have signs everywhere. You get negatives and positives and pluses and minuses. It's really confusing. If you let those signs work for you, treat them as term times term, it will become a little bit easier. Next up, I have negative 3x times positive 11. What's a negative times a positive? Negative. So I'm going to write that minus here. And then I'm going to have 3x times 11. I've already let the signs work for me. I've figured out all three of them. Notice only three signs now. Right? I don't have them everywhere. I just have those three. I've already done the sign work. Now I just have to manipulate those. So I have negative 24x to the third plus 3x squared minus 33x. Essentially all it's done is change every sign. Show of hands how many will feel okay with what we talked about so far. Can you extend the concept even, even further? Could I have one term times four terms? Yes. Or five or six? Sure. Now the question you might wonder is can you ever have more than one term times more than one term? Because we haven't talked about that yet. All we've done so far is one term times several terms. Two, three, you can do four, whatever. But we also have to master how to do this type of distribution. It's still called distribution. It's still multiplying polynomials, but check it out. What if instead of just one term, I had something like
that. Is that just one term times one term? How many terms are here? Two. How many terms are here? Two. So you have a different story. You have two terms times two terms. We need to discover how you do something like, like that. Now, it's still called distribution. So when you say distribution, you could mean either this over here, distributed, or what I'm about to show you over here, what, what happens. Now, the idea was, for every term inside, I, the parentheses, I multiplied it by the term outside. What this means is we got to do the same thing, only now instead of just one term, I've got two terms. So the idea is multiply every term in the first polynomial times every term in the second polynomial. That means this. What's my first term here? Y plus 3. No, the term. The first y term. Y. The first term is y. What's the first term here? Y. I'd have to multiply y times y. Are you with me on that? Okay. I'd also have to multiply this first term times this second term, y times 5. I'd also have to multiply this 3 times, that's the second term, times this first term, y. And the 3 times this 5. I've got to hit every combination of terms times terms. That's what we got to do. So our idea is you're going to multiply every term in the first polynomial times every term in the second polynomial. Now there is kind of a nice way to remember this. You might have heard this before. Uh, if, you, if you haven't, you haven't taken this class before, you've heard before, you've taken this class before. A, a lot of teachers use this, it's, it's an acronym, which is uh, the first letter of each, each word that you, that you use. It's called FOIL. Have you ever heard of FOIL before? Then you've seen distribution at some time in your life. The actual word for it is distribution. So when your teacher in Math A says, how do I get rid of the parentheses here? You're not going to say FOIL. Because right? FOIL is the way you do it. Distribution is the method of doing it. Do you understand the difference there? Yeah. Both these things are called distribution. FOIL is one method you have to distribute two terms times two terms. Here's what FOIL stands for. FOIL stands for first, outside, inside, last. It's the, the way you can order these terms around. So first, Outside, inside, last. First, outside, inside, last. Here's what we mean by first, outside, inside, last. Look up here at the board with me. I'll, sh I'll show you with my fingers what we're doing here. The first terms are y and y. Does that make sense? You multiply those first. The outside terms are these ones. Do you see the outside terms? I'm talking about like here's the middle, right? Those are my outside ones. These would be my inside terms, and these would be my last terms. This is just a way so you get every term times every term. Um, you're also going to show me arrows on what you're going to be doing here. So here's how you'd show that. Your first terms are, are written like this. Watch on the board. You're going to do your first times your first. That takes care of my first terms, and I'm going to write that out y times y y times y. Next up I would do my outside. Looks like that. y times 5. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let those signs work for you. Positive y times positive 5 gives you what? Positive or negative? Positive. So I'm going to write a plus. Just like we did over there, we let them work for us, we do the same thing here. Plus y times 5. You see where it's coming from? Am I done? No. No, I've only done half the work. I've only done these, this one times these two. Now I've got to switch to which one? Three. So y times y, y times five, I got that. Now three times y, these are the inside ones. So first, outside, now we're on the inside. Is it going to be a plus or a minus, do you think? Plus. Good. Positive times a positive means a plus. Three times y. And lastly, I've got 
the 3 times the 5. Am I going to put a plus or a minus? Plus. plus. Look at the board. Have we done every combination of terms? No. Yes. Get the y times y, y times 5, 3 times y, 3 times, that's everything. That's all four of them. Can we do each, each of these pieces? Yes. yes. What's y times y, folks? Minus y squared. Oh, I like it. Y squared plus how much? Y, y. <coughs> we don't write y5, do we? No. Y5. Y5. Plus how much? 3y. Plus? 15. Am I done? No. Oh, hey, here's something neat. Not only do we do distribution here, I just said neat. It's an old word. It's neat. We also did our our 10.2 stuff by using exponents, but now we're going to do our 10.1 stuff. You can combine like terms here, can't you? Yes. We got some y's here. So we've got a 3y and a 5y. I circle those with those signs, just like we've practiced in the whole semester. Is it 8y or 8? This is where you got to be good at it. Is it 8y or 8y squared? 8y. I have both answers going on out there. Let's have a battle royale. Feel us figure this thing out. Let me let me let me let me show you something for in your in your brains that's happening right now. When you did y, listen. When you did y times y, you got y squared, right? Yeah. Right. How can you do y plus y and still get y squared? Those things have to be different in your head. Multiplication and addition are not the same thing, are they? So if you're multiplying and you're getting y squared, when you're adding, you can't be getting the same thing. That's going to give you 5y. You're combining like terms. You've got 5y's here. You've got 8y's here. Oops, no, you don't. You have 3y's there. You have 5y's here and 3y's here. All together, you have 8y's. Not 8y squared. That doesn't happen unless you're multiplying. Do you see the difference? That's as far as you can go. Let's try one on your own real quick. Also, I need to point out to you that notice that this looks similar to addition subtraction, only instead of between the parentheses, I don't have a plus or minus. I've got a multiplication. So that means where you distribute. So if I give you this problem, look up here on the board here real quick. If I give you this, which looks just like something we've done before, are you going to do the same thing here and here? No. No, this one, would you have to distribute? No. No, it's add. <coughs> It's just addition. You drop your parentheses and combine like terms. Here, yes, you distribute. So do they look real similar? Yeah. You gotta be kind of careful on that. Are you seeing what I'm talking about here, people? Yes. Okay. This one will give you 2x plus 5. That's what that would be. This one, when we distribute, hopefully you did this, we're going to write out x times x. We're going to write out plus, because I have a positive times a positive, x times 3. I'm going to write plus because I have a positive times a positive.